Greetings friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel. I'd like to talk about Black Madonna's a new Roman Catholic holiday and something called Pachamama. During October of 2019, a couple of interesting things happened over in Vatican City. One was there was an Amazonian synod. We'll go into that more later. And the second is that a new Marian holiday was declared. Now, I'd like to read something from the National Catholic Register about the holiday. Pope Francis has decreed that the Feast of Our Lady of Loreto be included in the Roman calendar as an optional memorial be celebrated on December 10. With the decree, the optional memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Loreto must appear in all calendars and liturgical books for the celebration of the Mass and the Liturgy of the Hours. Now, for those who are not familiar with Loreto, I'd like to uh, uh, read something about it while you also get to see a picture of the Lady of Loreto. The title, Our Lady of Loreto, refers to the Holy House of Loreto, the house in which Mary was born, and where the Annunciation occurred, and to an ancient statue of Our Lady, which is found there. Tradition says that a band of angels scooped up the little house from the Holy Land and transported first to Teresata Dalmatia in 1291, then Reconati, Italy in 1294, and then finally to Loreto, Italy, where it's been for centuries. Now, of course, we don't believe that angels transported it there, but the Lady of Loreto is what's known as a Black Madonna. Well, the picture we showed, because the lighting doesn't quite do it that way, the reality is it's basically a black figure with a black child as well, black face at least. Anyway, I'd like to read something from Michael Duracy from the University of Dayton that goes into some background some information about black Madonnas. There are lowercase black Madonnas and uppercase black Madonnas. The former applies generically to any dark skin representation of Mary. The term frequently used to designate these images is enculturated Madonnas, meaning artwork by African or African American artists. However, that's not the topic of the feature, following feature. The meaning of black Madonnas used here refers to a type of Marian statue or painting, mainly of medieval origin, of dark or black features whose exact origins are not always easy to determine and most important of particular prominence. The latter, the prominence of black Madonna, is mostly due to the allegedly miraculous character of the image. Among the miraculous Marian images are so-called black Madonnas. Many of these images are quite popular among the faithful. In the early days of comparative religion discipline, authors casually equated black virgins venerated by Catholics with pagan goddesses of similar appearance. So basically, researchers have said, okay, the pagans have these black-faced goddesses, and oh, now we see these popping up within Roman Catholic circles. Now, uh, the University of Dayton then quotes uh, Stephen Benko, so let me read something from him. The Black Madonna is the ancient earth goddess converted to Christianity. His argument begins by noting that many goddesses were pictured as black, among them Artemis of Ephesus, Isis, Ceres, and others. Ceres, the Roman goddess of agriculture and fertility, is particularly important. Her Greek equivalent, Demeter, derives from Gemeter, or Earth Mother. The best fertile soil is black in color, and the blacker it is, the more suited it is for, for agriculture. So we see there's some background here tying this to something that's not, not Christian. Now there's a woman who claims to be Roman Catholic, and I think she's on, definitely on the fringe side of it, uh, and she's got some information about uh, the black faces of Madonna, or the mysterious black faces of Madonna. To many Christians, Mary is the heavenly mother of all, and like a good mother, she seeks to meet the needs of all her children, especially the mysterious black Madonna. She allows people to project their hopes and desires and needs up, uh, unto her, only to draw them ever deeper into divine mysteries. She plays many roles for many different kinds of people. She is the heiress of the thrones of the pre-Christian goddesses. So basically, this woman is saying, yes, there were these pre-Christian goddesses, and now we've got Mary, who basically is a continuation of them. Now, she then goes to explain more about them, so let me read something else she said. What exactly are black Madonnas? Good question. Some are images of Mary, the mother of Jesus, that portray her with pitch black skin while her garments are colorful. Others are entirely made of a blackened metal or wood, yet others simply darkened with 
patina, the normal aging process that all antique art and furniture undergoes. But while countless very older statues are dark, only some of them have been honored with the special title Black Madonna, Black Virgin, or Black Mother of God. Traditionally, a black Madonna is not something one can produce. It's something that happens to a community when heaven ordains it to be so. Countless wonderful legends tell of sacred miraculous origins of these images. French scholars tend to define only one type of black Madonna as authentically black. They are Romanist style, sculpted in wood in the 12th and 13th centuries. Their facial expressions are not tender and compassionate like those of later Marian images, but nobly aloof and sovereign. They portray a heavenly majesty far beyond our human realm and suffering. They were enshrined at places that were sacred even before Christianity, pagan holy sites and natural power sites that exchanges between heaven and earth. They have some connection to the near eastern orient, the Holy Land or its neighbors like Ethiopia, Syria, and Egypt. So this is what she's giving some about background. Now, I mentioned about the Amazonian summit, and we're going to get to Sinai, and we're going to get to that in a moment, but I want to get back to some more things about her writings, because I think this will help uh, tie it in with some of what Pope Francis has been up to. Continuing here, most black Madonnas have a strong uh, connection to the earth. Pagan worship of Mother Earth turned into Christian closeness to the sacred creation. One may wonder as the church appropriate pagan objects of worship like trees, groves, springs, rocks, did it value their sacred, sacredness or is it merely a ploy that could be controlled and gradually erased from people's consciousness? I think both. In order to keep venerating the same ancient trees, springs, and rocks that were consecrated to pagan deities, Christians merely had to consecrate them to Christian saints. Many were baptized, so to say, in the name of Mary. Why her instead of Jesus? Because the feminine was always seen as more connected to nature and the earth, and Mother Earth and the Father of Sky. Now, some of the most important pre-Christian goddesses were worshipped side by side with Christ overtly until the 16th century, covertly till the 16th, are associated with the color black. Why? Going back to historic time, prehistoric times, black was a symbol of the earth and the great mother, the source of the heaven and the earth. The darker the earth is, the more fertile, hence Black is the color of fertility and creative power. The great dark mother became known as the gate of life, life in the goddess after physical death. Echoing that title of the goddess, Mary is called the gate of heaven, e.g. in the litany of Loreto. So she's saying basically the Roman church had people who still wanted to worship these black-faced female images, and so they allowed them to do it, just change the names and that type of a thing. Now, she brings up an interesting uh, example, in a sense, that I'd like to read. So I want to go back to her writings again. Artemis of Ephesus was one of the most powerful goddesses in uh, antiquity. She was a classic black universal mother and was older and more powerful and more primal than her Greek forms and her Roman equivalent Diana. Now she mentioned Diana. You don't have to go there, but in Acts 19, verse 28, there was a scene where people were yelling or shouting, Great is Diana of Ephesus. Getting back to her writing, she says, It does not seem to be, does seem to be a coincidence at all that it is here that the Council of Ephesus in AD 431 proclaimed Mary, Mother of God. So she seems to see this connection there. Uh, between Ephesus worshiping Diana, the, the Black Madonna of Artemis, and then declaring Mary the mother of God in the same town. Now, she continues with, many Christian theologians, theologians think of Mary as divine. Even Cardinal Ratzinger called her divine mother during Pope John Paul II's funeral mass. To distinguish her status from that of Jesus, it is only said that she became divine by grace, whereas Jesus was always divine by nature. Well, so we see, you know, black Madonna is really a carryover from pagan worship. But this idea about Christians adopting paganism, no, Christians would not to do that. People who would do that would not be considered Christians. So consider something that the Apostle John wrote, 1 John 5, 21. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Well, keeping yourself from idols doesn't mean you go out and take idols and rename them. You say, well, that should be okay. Well, 
Let's go to something the Apostle Paul wrote, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, starting in verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? And what part has a believer and an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you, the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them, and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Well, obviously, Christians are supposed to be separate from and apart from things like pagan idols, and we shouldn't go ahead and uh, promote them or to say this is, this is a good thing. Now, I was going to talk a little bit about this, this thing called Pacamama and tie this in here. And I'd like to read uh, a couple different things. First of all, as one source says, in the wake of the October 6, 27 Synod bishops on the Amazon, in fact, I submit this proposition. Pacamama has become the new insider Catholic version of who am I to judge, meaning a single word or phrase which immediately upon utterance in front of another Catholic, whatever comes across her face will tell you everything you need to know about where he or she stands. The Pacamama is a female fertility figure representing Mother Earth, venerated by people in the Andes and portions of the Amazon. In the context of the Synod, it became a shorthand way of talking about several small figurines of a naked uh, pregnant woman. Now, a lot of Catholics were upset with this. Some actually, some people, actually, somebody actually took it and threw it in the Tiber River, but they pulled it back out. Now I'd like to read something else regarding this whole uh, Pacamama thing. But before I do, I want to make two comments. One, we made a video called uh, Vatican's Babylonian Amazonian Religion talking about the ceremony. And secondly, I'd like you to see a, a picture of this particular ceremony that was held in uh, Vatican City. And I use this particular picture, this is within St. Peter's, I use this particular picture because, one, it blocks the nakedness of the feature of the woman, it's behind the woman pink, this, this statue. But secondly, to show you that it actually was done within St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City, which I've been to multiple times and I can recognize the inside from the picture. Well, anyway, let me read something else about this. Pope Francis enraged Catholics worldwide by holding this pagan ceremony in the Vatican under the thinly veiled guise of being part of the Synod of Bishops of the Amazon. Pope Francis for many years has preached the gospel of the New Age and has led mul multiple services for Mother Earth and kisses the feet of statues and prays to dead people. So this edition of Pacamama and the Mother Goddess is right up his alley. Archbishop Vigano observes that Francis personally practiced the Pacamama cult in the Vatican Gardens in St. Peter's Basilica and during the Synod clothing, closing mass by placing idolatrous plant on the al altar. He calls this Pacamama show an initiatory rite of the new religion in order to align the church with anti-human and anti-Christian strategies that dominate the globalist scene and are supported by these powers. The Pacamama is a female fertility figure representing Mother Earth, venerated by peoples in the Andes and of course the Amazon, that popped up several other times before going on display in Rome's churches, Santa Maria in Transpotina near the Vatican. Now let me just say, I've been to this particular church, the Vatican for Santa Maria, and it's supposed to be for St. Mary. It's a Marian dedicated place, and they put in the statue. Now the statue isn't black, it's kind of a brownish color, uh, but some of the so-called Black Madonnas are kind of brown instead of black. Now I'd like to read one more thing from the Archbishop uh, Vigano, or something related to him. According to Vigano, a satanic plan is unfolding to change the Catholic religion, and Francis serves as a catwalk to ferry what remains of the Catholic edifice towards an indistinct universal religion and a worldwide and stateless Pantheon. Now the Pantheon was a building for multiple gods, which Rome now has, by the way. It was given to them by a Roman emperor, and it's actually dedicated to, to Mary. As I mentioned before, it's the second Marian holiday that uh, Pope Francis has come up with that I'm aware of. In 2018, he declared one called Mary Mother of the Church. And so we're seeing more and more uh, Marianism. 
And basically what's going on here is a move toward Babylon. And Revelation chapter uh, 18, verse 4, the Bible says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. So this is not something we're supposed to want to be part of. Yet, Pope Francis is going in an absolutely different direction. He wants to use Mary basically as a springboard to get people to accept his religion or to get other religions to accept what he's trying to do. And I'd like to see something that he said uh, in one of, prior to one of his Marian prayers. And we entrust this, our prayer, to the maternal intercession of the Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, and so she, like a good mother, may unite us. So his plan has been to work toward, toward unity. And I'd like to read something now from a member of the Eastern Orthodox Church. Mother goddesses have been known in the ancient world were not just confined to the Near East and Mediterranean, but are universal. The Koji Indians, among whom we lived in Colombia, worship a spirit called Mabuba, the ancient mother. When Roman Catholic missionaries attempted to evangelize the Kogi in the last century, they used the not uncommon strategy for drawing pagan peoples to Rome fold. Rather than explain the differences between pagan mythology and Christian truth, they found equivalents equivalences. Christ started this synchronistic view corresponds to the Kogi Sejukukui, a trickster god who faked his way to uh, own death by hiding in a cave, while Nabubu is said to be the Virgin Mary. This confusion has led the Kogis to call the pagan temples Casa Maria, a corruption of Casa de Maria, House of Mary. And the Lady of Loreto that I was talking about is to do with the House of Mary. So this is something that's been going on before, and basically the Pachamama thing kind of falls along with all this particular thing. Now getting back to the Eastern Orthodox writer, I'd like to read something else that he wrote in this. Today, as heterodox Christians become more and more ecumenous and are working toward creating a one-world church, the search has begun for a Mary of universal recognition, one who will appeal not only to those who bear the name Christian, but apparently to Muslims and others as well, just as attempts are being made to identify the new Christ with the Muslim concept of the coming Mahdi and the Messiah still awaited by the Jews. This, of course, will be no Christ, but the Antichrist. And various Catholics have suggested that various things of Mary be used for uh, interreligious uh, dialogue. And the problem is not that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was at all bad. I mean, she was a, a, a human. She was chosen by a God, and uh, she's to be blessed. But people claiming she's got a special message or a new gospel, that's something we need to be careful about. I'd like to read Galatians 1.8 from a Catholic translation of the Bible. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach a gospel to you besides that which we have preached to you, let him be an anathema. Various Marian images uh, things associated with some black Madonnas have preached a different gospel than the true gospel of the kingdom of God. The reality is that some of these marrying images and so-called miracles are likely to be part of the signs and lying wonders the Apostle Paul warned about in 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12. through 12. Black Madonnas, holidays for them, telling people to turn to Mary and promoting such things are actually part of Satan's plans, not God's plan. So, the Pachamama, yes, Catholics who are concerned that this is talking about paganism ringing into a one-world religion, I believe they're correct. Uh, no one should uh, be worshiping Mary. We're supposed to worship God according to the Bible. And we don't need more holidays for Mary. We do need to do people to do is to turn to the God of the Bible. Yes, Mary was the mother of Jesus, but she's not divine. We don't venerate her images. We don't consider that black Madonnas are, are appropriate things to bow down to, pray to, or whatever else which many are doing. And we certainly don't need another holiday for those type of things. I believe that the Word of God says, don't be caught up in this ecumenical interfaith movement towards some kind of Marian images. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible's Prophecy Channel.